Uh, hi, my name is uh, ND2 Daniel Clark. I'm from Mobile Diving Salvage Unit 1, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Um, we're here uh, supporting search efforts if, uh, if requested by the Indonesian government. What, what do you do for, for Mobile Diving Salvage Unit For Mobile Diving Salvage Unit 1, I'm a second class diver. Uh, I do all types of diving operations, salvage, recovery, uh, and sonar side scan. Can you talk to us a little bit about this um, piece of equipment? Yep. This is our um, C scan. This is, uses uh, different kilohertz of uh, sonar to d give us an image on the sea bottom. We can find things as small as a golf ball or, of course, uh, something as big as an airplane using uh, different uh, kilohertz bands and, and our swaths. How is it employed? Um, so what we do is generally we will deploy this off the back of our rib and uh, we'll use our coil here. We'll give out as much as 300 feet and we can see everything on the seafloor using our computer. So it's all in real time. And is it very clear? Yes, it's incredibly clear. Like I said, we can see everything as uh, small as a golf ball. So. How does it operate off the rib? How fast does the rib go? So the rib is only going to travel about uh, one and a half knots up to 5.7 knots, depending on the sea state. Uh, the faster we go, the less clear the resolution we're going to have. The slower we go, the more clear it's going to be. So for this, we're going to probably go a little bit quicker with a wider uh, swath so we can see more because we're looking for bigger objects. Yeah. It helps stabilize. Right. On a bigger rib, we're going to have more stabilization. We're going to be less affected by the sea state. Uh, it'll be more tolerable to uh, weather conditions than, uh, let's say, a six meter rib would be. How many people operate this with this? So, minimum manning for this is going to be three people. We'll have a coxswain. We'll have one guy who's going to be feeding uh, out the line, pulling it back in, one who's operating the software, watching constantly, uh, marking targets, measuring device, um, pretty much anything that we could possibly need. And then, how deep does it go? So this can scan up to 2,000 feet deep. Uh, at 2,000 feet, we're going to get a very low resolution, but we can do it. So more shallow water? Shallow, slower speed, uh, yep, higher kilohertz, going to give us the best resolution possible. So should we find uh, targets out there, we'll, go, we'll switch over to a very high resolution. We'll go very slowly. We'll get very clear images. And have you all used this type of equipment recently? Yep, we use this equipment quite often. Um, this uh, type of equipment is used in stuff like uh, finding MH370 or in the seawall, uh, also with finding uh, any type of other aircraft that might have gone down in the past. And what was your participation in uh, the seawall? So uh, a few months ago we were tasked with the seawall for assistance for chamber and small boat uh, operations to assist in the Koreans uh, in their tragedy. Um, what our charts would look like, they're um, taken from NOAA and uh, on these we can actually graph a box and we can uh, put our swath somewhere in the box and then just go over that entire area until the entire area is complete. Um, showing some of our like resolution in like a bad sea state, this is what we would get. A lot of shadows, but then if we get something um, with low resolution but a good sea state, we can actually see something as clearly as this. And then we can actually cross over the other way and we can eliminate these shadows and see everything perfectly. Exactly. Well, space management and all that stuff, you don't have to do PMAP or anything like that for brain biology. Okay. It's not high enough for the Okay. 